If you wanna stay relevant on YouTube and keep getting results, you definitely want to pay attention to the trends on YouTube. However, many of them are overrated. So which ones matter and which ones should be ignored? Video podcasts. What do you think? I think it's underrated. Chat GPT for content creators. You're gonna lose your job. Like, no, you probably got a handful of years left. Andrew Tate. Properly rated. I heard one person actually say that he's one of the greatest content creators of all time. In this episode of the Think Media Podcast, I'm back with Omar and Nolan, and I'm excited to talk about overrated and underrated YouTube trends. I'm ready. Uh, the first one is just YouTube itself. Is it overrated or underrated? YouTube is highly underrated. It's usually not the first platform people are trying to attack. I think it's good energy. Yeah, it's underrated. I think that it's mainstream now, it's accepted, but the average person still has no idea how much opportunity there is for regular everyday people to build a brand, get their message out, make side income. And even recently, the signing of the NFL and getting the NFL ticket and some of those things, YouTube continues to grow. And so I think the future of YouTube is very underrated. I 100% agree. And this is a really cool article from Hoot Suite. Uh, in 2022, this came out. And this is across all Android users. Um, I don't know why you got to ignore the iPhone users like that, but whatever. Uh, so, you know, it's still a good pool. But um, they found that YouTube was the most time spent of all social media apps. And this is actually like by far. So, it clocked in 23.7 hours per month. This is the average time per month. Yes. People are spending on YouTube. That's insane. That's a, that's like a day a month. Yeah. That's like that's probably I probably double that or more, but that's maybe for for the weak weak ones that are not strong with the YouTube force. YouTube is my TV. Like mm -hmm. that's what I consume. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So I want to bring up second channels. Eric has now this little vlog channel, uh, Ryan Trahan, uh, creator support, Khan and Samir. They're starting a new channel. So what do you guys think about second channels? I think, I think starting a second channel is, I mean, it depends on the season, but it's underrated because you can just have the systems in place to be able to have something on a separate channel. It allows you to a lot of times be a little bit more creative because you're not, you don't feel so boxed in. Um, but I think more people can actually do it if they just have the right systems. My take is that second channels are overrated for small and new creators. Too many people that are just starting are thinking about starting two or three channels. And I think that's the wrong move. You should start with a focus. The creators you mentioned are established. They have momentum. They've got resources. They've got money. And... 100% agree with Omar as well that it could be a part and should be a part of your YouTube journey, but should probably be avoided on your YouTube day one. What about, I, just, I would ask you, what about Think Media? What in you felt like I want, I need, it's time to start a second channel, do a podcast? I think that starting a second channel for the Think Media podcast versus Think Media, part of it was the simplicity of the audience because. A lot of times I think people subscribe to Think Media because of camera reviews and video editing tutorials. And the strategy, business-minded creator, marketing tips, build a business, is different than that. And there was enough difference. And then following that line of thinking, starting from scratch, devoted, call, putting podcast in the actual title, there was then layered reasoning. I do think that if the audience was the exact same, that it would have been possible to potentially keep it on the same channel. My next one was video podcast, and this just goes well with what we're talking about with, with your channel. But in general, video podcasts, what do you think? I think it's underrated. I think I think people should give it a shot as one of their content formats, you know, with the option to vlog, do a talking head video, do a live stream, do a faceless video. Video podcast, it's just um, I don't know, it's just, it's more conversational, a little a little less heavy on the need to edit. And I think it's worth a shot as far as packaging information in a certain way. Now, I don't, I don't believe just because you're good at something, you speak with intention. Um, the, I think it, it helps for a lot of people that, that are like really good educators or good communicators, but it's just a cool way to start. Get some friends together, get your wife or whatever, and just talk on camera. It's cool. Yeah. Or hide your wife, hide your kids. <laughs> yeah. 
and then get the homies together and start a video <laughs> podcast. But I mean, ultimately, I think people should go to youtube.com forward slash podcasts with an S. It may or may not pop up if you're outside of the US, but that not only is an aggregate page of YouTube organizing podcasts, but there's now a, a banner there where you could see multiple shows that are almost being advertised like you would see over on Apple Podcasts. And some insiders DM me recently about YouTube's agenda for podcasts. Like, it's just going to be a big deal. And so I think it is one of the biggest underrated strategies and opportunities for people listening to this right now. A cool thing that a friend of mine said, too, he, he wanted to, or he did, he interviewed his grandpa mm. for an hour and a half. Like just another, it's a cool thing. I mean, even if it's just for yourself to keep and put somewhere, but like interviewing people that you may not be able to interview ever again and just actually talk through some stuff. There's just so many cool things you could do with a podcast. I did that too, yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. You're my friend. We call it a legacy video. We got the idea from the Kardashians and they were filming like their grandparents. And I'm like, we, we sat down and we uh, started filming my wife's grandparents and um, just to have that, just hear their story and so cool. Yeah. Legacy videos are underrated. Yeah. I think getting wisdom from the next generation, the wisdom passed down, getting into conversations with your parents while they're with you, as well as to be able to learn from them and whatnot. I never knew this, but Madeline, my wife, her grandpa had a perfect bowling game and it like changed his life forever. And he's like sharing the story and it was just unreal. Like it got him all these scholarships and stuff. But I'm like, just, yeah, anyways, so I, I completely agree. Super cool. What about thumbnails? I think thumbnails are properly rated. I mean, I think they're respected properly. They're the most talked about and debated aspect of YouTube technical tweaking and- uh, Color theory. Color theory. <laughs> There's a Twitter account that literally just has like thumbnails and then it like shows the different like colors in there. Yeah. People are deep. <laughs> yeah, so I think- you could almost argue they're overrated, but I don't believe that's true. They're so important. I don't think people are underrating them. I think they're properly rated. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm trying to, th from the from the newer creative point of view, I, I do think they, I don't know, they make, it's, it's usually like they do way too much. Like, I don't know if they, I think they overrate it on their approach when really like we always teach simplicity, no more than three elements in your thumbnail. Mm -hmm. And so there's a level to it, not like, yeah, and then, you know, we have a story of a video that dropped that didn't even have a thumbnail and it performed amazingly. But because Google Chrome and even on your phone, the videos start kicking in. So it's becoming, if anything, it's it's airing toward a little bit more overrated if you're starting your videos pretty strong. I think video ideas, I think the topic matters more most of the time than the thumbnail and the title. I think that might be the most important part of packaging in just my opinion. And uh, so for that reason, when it comes to video ideas, I think video ideas are underrated. I don't know if you guys agree with that, but I wanted to group those together. Thumbnails, titles, video idea. This is what, you know, we talk about the packaging. Um, packaging in general even is so important, but I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on those three things. Idea, thumbnail, title, where, what's most important there? I agree with you. Topic is most important because sometimes people, they get too far, the ball, ball's too down, far down the field and they're like, why is this video not performing? It actually, I put a lot of effort in editing it. It's clear. And even the title was good and the thumbnail was simple, but you're like, yeah, but does anybody care about the subject matter? So, so topic is your big opportunity. And even if you fail on a lot of other points, but pick the right topic and deliver decent value, it can perform incredibly well because you just cover the right topic at the right time and uh, you understand what viewers want. Andrew Tate. Andrew Tate is properly rated. I wonder if people know who Andrew Tate is. If you know who he is, I think he's properly rated. If you don't know who he is, I still think he's probably underrated. I heard one person actually say that he's one of the greatest content creators of all time. And I think that whether or not you agree with his views, he's definitely controversial and polarizing. People could be critical of that, but anybody who becomes the most Googled man for a period of time 
has figured out how to get attention, which is one of the goals you're trying to do with content creation. He knows how to communicate his ideas. Um, he knows how to trigger people and get people talking. And certainly many of his messages are spreading. So I feel like one of the most underrated opportunities for creators to get better is to learn from people they don't like and to be able to eat the meat and throw out the bones from if, if, if they weren't so sensitive and didn't get offended at everything, they could say, okay, it, this may not be my worldview or my beliefs, but what can I learn from this person? And then how could I ultimately use that from their vantage point, maybe for good? And so I think that there's a lot to, to learn from Andrew Tate. I also think he's overhyped in some cases. That's why I'd say properly rated. How about you, Omar? I mean, <laughs> I looked at you so hard. Um, you know, I, I feel like for, you know, there's just, I mean, it's cool to like study somebody like that. And, you know, I would say the guy that would used to do all the ads with the books, Ty, is it Ty, Ty Lopez? Ty Lopez. I would say Ty Cruz, but like, that's not the right guy. <laughs> Ty Lopez. <laughs> but uh, he, he, it was just like, he'd be like the modern era of that. He, he figured out the time and place of things and how to uh, create virality and, um, and yeah, there's just things you could pick as, you know, as far as picking a side, being polarizing, but I don't know. I, I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't care much about the guy. I mean, as far as like, I was wondering, you know, a few weeks in just like, what, what, did, what did he do? Like, what did he do wrong? And then I don't know, just how he became mainstream. It's kind of crazy. This video was brought to you by StreamYard. StreamYard is our go-to platform for streaming to YouTube and Facebook with an incredibly easy to use interface for built-in branding, transitions, text lower thirds, and seamlessly bringing on guests. It really is one of the best options when it comes to live streaming. And what's so cool is they've implemented a brand new feature called local recording. Take control of your audio and video with local recordings by separating out your audio and video from your guests. This feature gives you the control over your content for later use, making it perfect for podcasts and video creators. Just go to streamwiththink.com to get started now. How about viral videos? I think viral videos are overrated. I agree. Yeah. I think that viral videos are also dangerous to a creator's health because one, you may get 15 minutes of fame, but if that's all you get, then you're not gonna have long-term success. Two, Book of Proverbs says, an inheritance gained too early in the beginning won't be blessed in the end. So sometimes going viral can actually be harmful to your psychology. It's, all, it's like drugs. It actually quite literally is drugs to your brain. The serotonin and dopamine and emotional experience you can have from going viral can make you delusional. Being delusional is not helpful. The effect of a viral video on you could make you prideful. Being prideful over the long haul is gonna lead to your downfall. And so, I think that at the same time, I'm all for, let's get as many viral videos as possible, but slow and steady success is much more practical, much more healthy, and uh, avoiding those extremes, I think also can lead to a much longer career. That's really good. Yeah, I mean, I think the idea of just to go viral, 100% overrated, and you don't want to accidentally go viral for the wrong thing. like. What, what happened to the Mexican dude on the skateboard drinking cranberry juice? Like, I don't know, like, <laughs> cool though. Like yeah. he had a little- I'm an island boy. Like what happened to those guys? Yeah. They just, you know, they pop smoke, but it was, I think it's Brock Johnson who teaches this concept VFM. Is yeah. it viral for me? Yep. So you like can that. have the right viral, you know, mm -hmm. you know, you make the right video for the right group that makes sense for what it is you want to be known for. That's a beautiful combination. And that usually just comes by showing up consistently and not knowing that this video struck a chord or you made a, you know, a reaction video at the right time about, you know, the real estate market or what have you. And so I think there is a level to just like, just aiming for the consistency more than it is the virality. And you will see some nice little fires pop off of that. I like this topic. You know, I think, I think that it also maybe depends on who you're talking to. If you're talking to a brand that wants to get the word out about their product, then vir a viral video is a great thing to pursue because you know what your end game is, the most eyeballs possible for that, that's great. 
I think where you might get into more danger is you talk about a personal brand and even potentially there's a generation of people right now that are chasing views. I think chasing views is a terrible pursuit. I think if you're chasing impact, if you're chasing building something of significance and views is part of the equation, but it's not the main thing. And that goes back to, you know, sipping cranberry juice and being on a skateboard. If I'm just trying to go viral on YouTube shorts, I'm just trying to go viral on TikTok, unto what? And there's some people, they're not even sure. They're like, I don't know. I thought that's just what we're all trying to do. I mean, yeah. where, where's this all going? So I think a little bit more thoughtfulness in terms of what it is you're trying to build. And I think that if people think a little more deeply, that again, uh, we've experienced viral videos at Think Media here and there, but we also always come back to the slow and steady. So they're a nice little kick in the pants. They're a nice little boost in the brand. They're a nice, nice little <laughs> kick in the stick. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know about that no, one. No, what's funny is like, we have a friend who like yeah. is pretty a uh, big uh, personal brand on social media on every platform. And Ryan Pineda, yeah. <laughs> I'll just say his name, why not? <laughs> no, but it, he has a TikTok coach and his TikTok coach will tell him like, hey, talk about what like a random thing because the random thing gets you in front of so many and then you have majority of your stuff to be the, the reason why people know you for what you know, but at least they met you because you talked about Panda Express, you talked about watches, you know, you wore those booty shorts. Like that was the thing. He was actually told by his TikTok coach, hey, wear, boot, <laughs> wear short, short shorts and bright colored shoes on your necks and put the camera like shooting up like if you watch some of his, you know, That's, okay. and, and usually when they make these <laughs> tweaks on TikTok, they like, they work. Wow. I don't know, but then I don't know. Booty you know? shirts, <laughs> underrated. <Yeah>. But, <laughs> but you know, here's, here's what's interesting because I know Ryan and you know, Ryan. And what I love about him is because of knowing the big picture, he wrote a book called The Wealthy Way, which is all about, you know, family and legacy and wealth meaning like happiness and joy and impact and generosity. So Ryan is trying to go viral, but has a big vision and legacy that it's all unto. And that's what I'd be challenging people for. Yep. When you isolate virality for virality's sake, I think it could be overrated. But I do think, because by the way, I, would, I, I love that you say some of those things, because I would be happy to try. I, I got to try the booty shorts thing, the man. The booty short, I, I need bright some neon bright shoe shoes, technique. <laughs> booty shorts. You, you, you go got running. To, I mean, you're, you're like halfway there. I already got them. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just yeah, need to actually. And five so inches. I'm, in, I, I'm into it, but also the impact we want to make is, is bigger. And then even on a more practical level, like what's the bigger business model? What's the bigger brand? What's the goal? As opposed to just trying to like jump on a trend. And I think the thing is, is that it doesn't end at the end of that, vid that video. The point is it's, it's a top of funnel to get you into a deeper world that you have. Yes. What you guys are saying, I think, is purpose is underrated mm. because if your focus is just on views, if your focus is just on money, it – where does it lead to that it never ends? And that's one of the things I love working at Think Media is the purpose, the faith just behind what we're doing, helping people. And um, I, and I think you guys said it, you know, that is underrated. Yeah. So batch shooting videos. I want to talk about that next. Can you explain first though, like what it, what is it? And then just talk about if you think, you know, who should do it or should more people do it? Yeah, batching is the concept of compiling the action of creating in a one-time sit down. And you could batch your scripting process, you could batch your thumbnails, we did that today. Uh, you can batch shooting videos because you batch the planning. Now, I think um, I think batching is underrated. I think, I think people aren't thinking uh, wise enough with their time. And if you are a busy individual, or if you're, you're trying to um, make a YouTube channel happen with a part-time or full-time job, maybe a family, that batching should be your best friend. And so I think it's underrated just for that way of thinking. It's a really smart way to think as a creator. How can I create more content in less time? And we do, you know, there's many ways you can do that. Like this video podcast, even today, today is a batch day. We flew you in and, um, but we, we want to use our time wisely because there's so many other things we could be doing. But the powerful thing about video is I believe there's no greater multiplier of time other than video. So if you can make videos in less time, you're creating an asset that's going to work thousand times over based on the views or the reach that it can get. And therefore 
keeping that in mind will actually probably make you think batching is more important than it is maybe currently in your content creation. And I agree with Omar, but also I think to present a contrarian perspective, I think in today's world, batching can become overrated. And for this reason that you over batch and you miss out on the opportunity to react to things in real time. Our mutual friend, Vanessa Lau, uh, talked about this because she focused entirely on getting like eight, 16 weeks ahead or something, and then was not able to talk about things that were relevant and trending in the now. I think that the cure for that is to include batching in your process, but then to have additional opportunities to also jump on trends. That's why I love live streaming, is to maybe see an article drops or a new feature drops and you can get that out quickly while there's also a batch in the queue. And uh, I, my propensity is sometimes to over batch. We did a thumbnail batch today and I brought literally- <laughs> Your whole wardrobe. My entire <laughs> wardrobe which was completely unrealistic. I brought you know every article of clothing that I own thinking that we were going to shoot thumbnails for the next three years and uh, I might've been overdoing it. So I think you can over batch, that yeah. is, is the idea. Yeah. You should tap into it, but it's not everything. There's 100. also something about creating real time when you respond and when you feel it. And that might be the other thing is that sometimes, sometimes, sometimes some of the time, the best content is when you're coming well, always the best content is when you're coming from the heart. And sometimes it's hard to get into the emotional state of something in a batch context. It's a lot of different emotions, whereas maybe you read something, you see something, and it's in that moment that you should create. So you want to be ready to capture that inspiration in the moment as well. So it's not either or. Yeah. You should batch, but you should also maybe yeah, create dude, content I, when you feel the fire. I absolutely love creating from inspiration. Like when I just feel it, I'm like, dang, like, I watched the Casey Neistat video and I was like, dang, I want to, I want to commentate on how he creates videos. It's very simple, but very engaging and people can achieve this. I don't know. I felt inspired. Didn't really even need a script. Like it's kind of like, uh, it's cool to be able to, to be able to, but the batching, I see it, it, it allows me to be able to be freely creative like that too. There's one other thing on batching. I think the world is different today than it was a few years ago. And that is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> but, but here's what no I, cap. <laughs> <laughs> but but here's what I mean, because we've been talking about this stuff for a while, and so four years ago we were like batch. Well, four years ago there wasn't really vertical video, there wasn't YouTube Shorts, there wasn't the green screen effect on TikTok or on YouTube Shorts, to where you can now easily screenshot an article and then green screen and react two hours after it comes out. So I think that's the other thing is to say, what content format are you creating? I think that a piece of a creator's empire should be their batch consistent show potentially that has more of an evergreen appeal. And then there's also other content formats, notably vertical video, which could be made. Uh, we started a 10 minute countdown during one of our live streams during our challenge. And so uh, we, we met as a team, we started the countdown, and then I got on Google News, found an article, <laughs> screenshot the article, set it up, plugged in my little iRig mic, filmed re a 30 second commentary on the article, saved it, posted it as an Instagram reel, and then jumped on and was still able to do that in 10 minutes. And so I quite literally had a shot clock, I had to be ready. Um, and was able to pump out a vertical video in less than 10 minutes. And so it's both and. I think that that's a different content format that doesn't take as much, uh, you know, maybe for planning like you planned out this episode. So, okay, we've exhausted this topic. But, yeah, but uh, I, I want to move on to YouTube Shorts, which you're talking about. Um, and, you know, today is February 1st, which is when we're shooting this. And um, today something cool happened, which is YouTube's paying us for ads that are happening on YouTube shorts. And so we don't know what that looks like. We might know in the next couple of days if it takes as long as just the, the regular ads do. But uh, so this honestly answer could change, you know, but right now I do think YouTube shorts are underrated. Uh, I think the, the best case scenario with YouTube shorts is the viral aspect, which we touched on, but 
actually what I found on uh, uh, this YouTube channel that I started from scratch was that uh, 1 million views on YouTube shorts actually got me three times more subscribers as 1 million views on my long form video. And that's really interesting. Um, and so we see someone like Mr. Beast who feels like he just hit 100 million subscribers. He's already 130 million subscribers. I don't know the analytics of where the subscribers were coming from shorts, but he's posting shorts. Those are going even more viral, getting even more views, even more subscribers. I am on the side that they right now are still highly underrated without going into all the little details of, you know, why, you know, what it's used for. And, you know, some people, it's just a t topic that people like to argue about, but I think they're underrated. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I don't have a full grasp on it. You know, like I'm like what kinds of, I'm seeing people ha find their way in it. One, uh, Chris Ramsey, a magician, he only posts iPhone reels or iPhone YouTube shorts, but his content content is super cinematic, clean and crispy. And he found that that just works. You know, people like the, 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 the real relatable stuff, but yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I still, I mean, we're, we're still beta testing too. It's, it's new. It's new. So maybe, it, maybe you would land on the underrated part just because like, we don't know yet. Yeah. yeah. I think they're underrated for sure. I, I think that, um, and I, I think that in our community, cause I always want to add value to the think media podcast. I hear too many people counting them out or avoiding them. I think because we can become resistant to change and we can be, ah, I, I just don't like them. Well, okay, fair enough. But like, is it about what you like or is it about what's effective? And is it about, are you falling in love with a content format or are you actually thinking about what's your mission? Because if it's a tool to help you actually make an impact and reach people, and if it could be a gateway to long form, which is what YouTube themselves have said they're trying to achieve and they're continuing to tweak the algorithm so that as shorts get awareness, recommendations, back up your long form videos, I think that it's a mistake to ignore YouTube shorts. On the topic of new change, what do you think about chat GPT for content creators or AI in general for content creators? Underrated. And I think it's a mistake for the people who are saying it's overrated. Some people are like, oh, it's hype. It's not that great. No, it's a big deal. Like, and this is also just version 1.0. This is now public AI that's just kind of hitting the marketplace. For some, it might seem a little gimmicky. You know, for example, I, uh, I said, hey, ChatGPT, write me a hip hop rap song about YouTube and personal branding in the voice of Notorious B.I.G. And it did it, but it definitely was not Notorious B.I.G. And sure. it was not good. So then I was <laughs> like, in the voice of the Migos. It did that as well. And it was like the same song. It was nothing even different. And it was like worse. And then I was like, in the voice of J. Cole. And again, it, that nuance was not there. Now that'd actually be pretty wild because we're talking about like all time artists and lyricists that are rhyming syllables and all kinds of different things that are happening. So it's, it's cool. I mean, it's a cool utility. I think that, uh, I do think it's underrated though. And I, I, I'm tempted cause I think I just saw Tom Bilyeu impact theory. He just dropped his take on AI. Alex Ramosi video was really good. And I think Caleb Ralston, our, our friend, you know, had a lot to do and he DM me that one. It's also kind of like everyone's jumping on it, but I think that's a proper response to how big of a deal it is. Yeah, no, I think it's underrated. I, I mean, sometimes you just have to, you know, I contextualize the world of YouTube and influencer stuff. It's still a very small percentage. And so I feel like it, it, because it's not mainstream, it's not really, people are still, you know, copywriting, you're gonna lose your job. Like, no, you probably got a handful of years left, you know, like, but you can use it to speed up processes. That's why I think it's cool. Like, that's always been the beauty of time. You know, our parents had to go to the libraries and re go through many books to get a little bit of information. And then we had Google and that was beautiful. And now we got ChatGPT, mm. so shout out to the future. Yeah, some people say that ChatGPT will destroy Google. And what do you think? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, 
I was like, mean? is it? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's really, really cool. And I've been using it for just coming up with video ideas and stuff for what I do. But yeah, you still right now need that human element to filter those. And so I'm excited about it though. And I think people should be exploring it. And I think it's underrated because I was just sharing uh, chat GBT and then also like open AI image, uh, all this kind of stuff with, um, some people who have never even heard of it. They didn't even know it existed. And so a lot of people, you might be hearing about it for the first time and it's going to make your life easier. So I'm excited for it. What do you think about community posts on YouTube? The community tab darn well, may be the most underrated feature on YouTube. Now, I think I'd say that you do need a decent following for it to to uh, get results for you. Like, because they're giving it out now at basically any level if you qualify. People with 26 subscribers can get the really? community tab. Yes. And so you right. just have to- uh, tribe, Their tribe tab. Yeah. You just <laughs> check a couple boxes and you can get it. It takes like a week and then you have it. I feel like you need a couple hundred subscribers to a thousand for it to be interesting. Why I call it really underrated is because when we're in like our YouTube boot camp coaching program or whatever, I go to people's community tab when we're doing channel reviews. And a lot of times it's a ghost town. And some of these channels are established. They may have 8,000 subscribers or 16,000 or 600,000. And there's just so much opportunity there. You can post up to three times a day effectively, you could even do more, but like uh, effectively, so long as it's valuable and engaging, you're not just marketing. You could do polls there. You could just ask a question and get a lot of feedback. People can shape the vision of your next video. You can get honest feedback about a last video. The creator who understands the viewer best wins and the community tab is this chance for you to understand your community better, get insights, get data, get feedback. One of my favorite things to do is if something's on my mind, if I have a question, I love to just quickly take it to the community tab and then check back. Like, okay, I wonder what our audience would think about these three video ideas and which one should I make next? Turn it into a poll. That's so powerful. We're stuck between what title would you be most likely to click on? You think you, your intuition has it. Maybe it confirms that, which is nice because now you have more confidence. Or maybe it goes in an entirely different direction. You can do polls with little square images, which are kind of more we fun. We test the thumbnails with this, but they're so tiny. But still, it's still a little bit of we insight. We got some really good feedback, and it's it helped boost our click through rate. And then you also can send traffic to your email list or to other things and off platform. And so, yeah, it's it's just uh, it's definitely underrated. It's underutilized. And it's also used wrong in a lot of cases. For example, if you just link to a video on the community tab with just the YouTube URL, that is the worst performing type of post versus uploading a square image that's maybe different than the thumbnail. That's just kind of interesting and stops the scroll with a clickable link. It can perform 10 to 50 times better. And we've tested this extensively. So yeah, I think, uh, I think it's underrated. What about the first 30 seconds of your video? We call it the hook, um, but basically it could be the first five seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, you're opening. I, I think it's overrated to feel like you need to over edit for it. Mm. Um, Cause you can, you, I think you can get right into the content and that's, that's a great way to approach it. So I, I think, I think that the thought process behind it, I think you don't have to stress yourself that you need to spend two hours on that first 30 seconds of editing, just make your content better in the first 30 seconds. But even that's a strategy though, which is getting into it quicker. And there's 100. a lot of people don't do that though. 100. Yeah. No. But, um, I get what you're saying because typically when I'm doing hooks, I'm like, I am doing the other strategy of I'm trying to tease what's coming up. I'm trying to show, uh, what you're going to learn in the video or transformation. And I'm really spending a lot of my time, usually my scripts, the beginning of the video, I'm scripting word for word and the rest of the video is just bullet points. And the reason for that is I know for me, I know how important it is. And, uh, just based on a lot of people in our community, I think that is one of the things that I, I want to call it underrated because I think a lot of people miss out on, they're not even doing what you're doing, which is like, you'd be better off not even doing a hook, not even doing anything in the beginning if you just get straight into the content. Uh, and so for that reason, I, I'm like, it's underrated and people need to realize just how important it is. I agree with that. Well, I wanna go back a little bit to like the community post. I think it poses a, 
a picture of the creator, the one that complains about how people aren't engaging with their content and platforms give you the ability to you engage with your audience and yet you don't take, seize that opportunity. It just goes to show where you're really at. You mm -hmm. know, like don't, don't ask for engagement on your videos or you want it if you're not even willing to engage your community that's already there. Strong. Thanks so much for checking out this episode. If you want to check out another one, then click or tap the screen. Can't wait to see you in a future video. Peace.